So, Parshas Tzavah, we know that is the it's a unique Parsha from the point of view that it is the only Parsha from Shemos on when Moshe Rabbeinu comes onto the scene that his name is not mentioned in that Parsha. And we know that's based on a, on a Chazal that says that Moshe Rabbeinu said, Mechini no misifrucha. So that itself is a very important lesson that we see a number of times throughout <clears throat> throughout Shas that you know when a person says something, the power of the statement, even when it's said conditionally, is is very powerful. Certainly, when it comes from somebody as great as Moshe Benu, uh, we find this uh, numerous times that even though he said it on the condition, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't forgive the Jewish people and allow them to to survive, uh, I want no part of a new nation. I want no part of uh, starting. Klai Yisrael in a sense all over again. This is my people. And if not, erase me from your book. So even though technically he should not be erased from the book because HaKash uh, Baruch listened to him. But the uh, statement by itself, just the power of that statement has tremendous impact and it was fulfilled to some degree in this in this parsha. Um so the question obviously is, so why Dafka this Parsha? Of all the Parshas, why, why this one? So maybe two different uh, ideas, um, both fundamental, both very important. Uh, I saw one shot that, that Moshe Benu's yard site is always the week of Tzitzav. Zayin Adar took place uh, this past week, and this past week is Parsha Tzitzav, as it, um, I think, if not always, almost always ends up this this way. So, and so HaKadosh Baruch Hu sort of manipulated the calendar as such, and um, Zayin Adar being the day and the day of the birth of your Moshe Benu, the day of the Petir of Moshe Benu is the yard site as well. <clears throat> if there's ever a day, if there's ever a week, that maybe there's a, there's a, there would be a danger within the, you know, people's minds in Klai Yisrael, as we know that the people are want to do, there is a lot, there's a certain mentality of the masses, certainly we see this in the various uh, religions over the, co- over the course of history, that people you know, really have no problem making a human being a deity, that was Yaakov Avinu's concern uh, about, uh, about the Mitzrayim not making him into, into a god, and and there was a concern that uh, as the time uh, as time passes, the danger that maybe Moshe Benu would be made into something more than just uh, the greatest navi in Jewish history. Granted, he was the greatest leader. Granted, he was a pal adarba boy. It was something that he uh, certainly achieved levels of greatness that no human being has ever achieved, <clears throat> not before, not after. And therefore, there might be a temptation that maybe certain segments of Klai Yisrael uh, would try to, you know, make him more than what he was, the greatest person, uh, greatest leader of all time. But uh, to attribute in any way Chas Shalom certain godly aspects, that's completely antithesis to what we're about. As tempting as, as it is for, for uh, maybe the minds of certain people, this is sort of a, I don't know, sometimes it's a, it's a, it's a Easy for us somehow we relate to something that uh, he actually walked the earth and somehow to attribute powers to him. Maybe there's a certain uh, direction that we like going in that gives us a sense of comfort. I'm not sure why we do that, but uh, there's certainly we see it in history. We're in the nations of the world, uh, they certainly gravitate in that direction, and um, and we Chas Shalom could gravitate in that direction as well. And if we're gonna, and if that's going to happen, certainly Moshe Bena would be a prime candidate for that to happen to. And therefore, Kosh Baruch Hu was reminding us, let's take Moshe Benu's name just in the very week where there is a potential to maybe glorify him in a way that's inappropriate too much. So um, let's remember, this is Parsha Tzitzavah, the Parsha that he, his name was taken out, that Kosh Baruch Hu took his name out and sort of reminding us of, of uh, his humanity and his frailty. He's far at the end of the day, he was born and he passed away. And as such... That's exactly, that's exactly the, the position that he has to take in our minds. We cannot attribute any type of you know, super levels of, uh, 
of being to, to, to anything other than Anakash Baruch. We only have one God and we only uh, attribute all powers and all sources of, of uh, fortune, whatever, whatever happens in this world to Anakash Baruch. So it's certainly a wonderful reminder that, uh, you know, as we may maybe have fallen to temptations of doing these kinds of things, Parashas Tzav reminds us this is who we are. We are a people that has a relationship directly with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Not exactly the same, but no, remember hearing from my Rebbe very often, the Rashiva Tzav would say that, uh, you know, and what would be if the Rambam, you know, certainly in the going to yeshiva 60s, 70s, and 80s, you know, the, certainly in the many circles, the Rambam was seen as sort of as a central, you know, Rishon. And uh, if there's a Rishon to analyze, and this is certainly, you know, brisket Torah for already many, many decades, centuries. Uh, brisket Torah is on the Rambam. And, um, and there's maybe a danger to sort of maybe give him, you know, again, a greater height, not so much maybe a deity, but even the idea that, you know, to attribute that this, he's, he's sort of supreme over everybody else. Remember what she was saying, and what, what would be if, God forbid, we found that the Rambam was wrong, and let's say, uh, whatever it is, we found something in his writings that would qualify, certainly was a controversial figure. People have said that, but let's say it became clear, and obviously Rabbi Yonah did Shuvah for what he said and what he did, but let's say we found that just as a point of... Uh, Concept, he would say, "Well, we we take the Rambam off the shelf and we we go right there." So uh, our religion would be would be undermined because uh, because uh, the Rambam, you know, was taken off the shelf. I mean, we our, our we our connection to Hakadosh Baruch Hu and the basis of our Torah has, is so rich and so deep. It's not dependent on any one person. So just sort of the the reminder and the the message to to Klai Yisrael Dafka in this parsha that his name is not there. Let's let's keep things in perspective. Let's not uh, let's not forget that uh, that we're the Am Segula and our relationship is di- directly with Hakadosh Baruch Hu. That, that's certainly one very important message that we always have to remember. Uh, the other the other answer, not to say there are only two, but just another point that I saw was. Uh, also, this is the parsha that focuses on the big day kahuna, uh, and this is the parsha that uh, that that Aaron Hakohen and and the, the, his whole role became very focused and became prominent. And you know, I guess you know part of the message is and just in the in the, in, in the quality of humility and the way we you know we have to overcome whatever whatever feelings we might have. You know, Moshe. Moshe was was grappling with this whole issue. Moshe was he worked very hard to not feel that uh, that Aaron's position of Kuna Gedolim uh, might a different Chazal as to why he was given to Aaron. Moshe's resistance, uh, in a sense, cost him to some degree. Really, Moshe, but it was supposed to be the Kohen Gadol. But this again, this concept of uh, you can learn it in a num- number of different ways. But Moshe Benu maybe even was wanting to wanting to remove himself from this parsha. Uh, in the sense that, you know, this should be Aaron's moment. This should be, if Aaron was being given the Kuna Gedoyla uh, because of his stature and because of Samach Baliboy, he had this incredible ability to to uh, share in Moshe Beinu Simcha. He's not going to be jealous, even though he was known to be the the only prophet of his time. Moshe was not seen as great as Aaron. Aaron was, was in Mitzrayim. He was with the Jewish people. And uh, naturally... Everyone would have assumed him to be that leader. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu said, no, it's going to go to Moshe Benu. But, but, but here, there's one parasha that needs to sort of give Aaron that moment and to give him that glory, in a sense, removing Moshe Benu's name, not so much as a punishment for Moshe Benu, but just as a message to, to what Chu Anov is about. Remove yourself. Let somebody else, you know, give somebody that moment to shine where you're not sort of uh, crowding him, you're not sort of taking away anything from him. And here at, at this moment when he is, when the instructions were given to, to, to Moshe Beinu, Viata, you're just an Atah, you're not, you're, you're not going to be mentioned. We're going to focus on, on, on Aaron. And certainly it's a, it's a good message for us when things happen and maybe you know, we wanted something and we feel we could have been this, we could have done that and somehow to really, you know, we sometimes maneuver, you know, to try to get some level of cover that none of, none of those emotions are acceptable. That uh, somebody deserves something, someone is, someone is given a position to feel that simcha and to allow that person that moment to completely shine on his own and not to in any way try to diminish from it. This is all what Anov is about. That's, that's certainly the quality that Moshe was able to achieve during his life. That's the quality that Aaron 
certainly was able to achieve in his life, and uh, that's the quality, as we know from Chazal, it's how important it is, and that's certainly a quality we should try to master as we go uh, throughout our lives.